So there was this point of time when I was ready, when I was humble enough, when I was broken enough to realize that I cannot put myself together, that I'm a sinner. Very crucial, a very crucial experience and conclusion was that I myself have sinned millions of times against God and that I need forgiveness and that I cannot, the huge void inside of myself because I felt this void for over 35 years in my life and I, I suffered from severe depression, with suicidal thoughts due to severe childhood trauma, of course, but I never could fit this void. I was a successful singer on stage in front of 80,000 people on some huge festivals, but this did not fill my void. I was drinking, I was um, taking drugs, having sex, whatever. Nothing could fill this void, nothing. The void was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But then the, the severe crisis that I mentioned, my father's suffering and death and the, di the diagnosis of my little son who was diagnosed with cancer at the age of three, these were the crucial turning points in my life. And I was asking the big questions, where am I coming from? What am I doing? And where am I going to? And it was really, really not convincing to me that nothing had created everything randomly out of nothing. That did not make any sense to me. So I realized that I was in rage with God, at war with God. God wasn't dead to me, even though I was singing, God is dead. Yeah, because I killed him inside of me. I myself killed him, but that did not mean that he was dead. He was dead inside of me, but not dead. God cannot be killed. Even though Satan thought that he had killed God on the cross on Calvary, he did not know that Jesus had finished it all that Jesus had conquered death, that Jesus had conquered Satan and the demons. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that ever believes, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. With what Jesus did on the cross, he took away the curse from this world Satan knew that he had lost. He thought that he had killed the Son of God. But after three days, Jesus surpassed the realm of death and was the glorious winner over the realm of death. And he had absorbed the sin of the world. So now, if you humble yourself, repent of your sin, come to Christ, confess return from your sin and receive the Holy Spirit. You are a born again and confessed believer because we are only saved through grace and faith, not through our own works. That's what the Bible tells us. And that's exceptional. All religion, including Catholicism and Orthodoxy, wants to tell you that you need to do something. But Jesus tells us you cannot do anything without me. And that's the message of the gospel. God needs to become a human being because we are lost and cannot do anything for our own salvation. And that's exceptional. You cannot find it anywhere else but in Jesus Christ. And that's why it says before Christ and after Christ all over the world. Why? Because God fixed it that way. So that no one will have an excuse. You're confronted with Jesus Christ and the most crucial and most important deed that God had done for mankind. But as God is no tyrant, he remains with free will. He won't force anyone back to paradise. It will remain a free gift that you need to take, knowing that you cannot add anything to it. Does that mean that we can accept Jesus and sin on? No, because that's what Jesus tells to every sinner in the whole Bible. 
return and sin no more. Does that mean that we can become completely sinless beings as born-again Christians? No. God sees us as sinless and holy because the Holy Spirit entered us and in our hearts it's carved, paid in full by Jesus Christ on the cross. So we are undeservedly saved sinners when we get born again. We know that. So when we change the Holy Spirit changes us. This is a gift from God again. So we get baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's a gift of God. And that's what's written in the Bible. So water baptism cannot save you. Baby baptism is not mentioned in the Bible. What's mentioned is that people understand what the gospel means and decide for Christ because they repent and return. And then they get baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible tells us. John the Baptist says, I am here to baptize you with water for repentance. But after me, there's going to be someone who's far bigger than me, who was even before me, and I'm not even worthy to take his shoes off or carry his shoes. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that's the act of getting born again. That's why Jesus tells to Nicodemus, you urgently need to get born again, otherwise you won't see the heavenly kingdom. So water baptism shall be done after the baptism with the Holy Spirit because you're only saved by grace and faith alone. So if you're born again, you're saved. And the water baptism after the baptism with the Holy Spirit is a symbol for the spiritual world. That now you're a child of God. That you died, your former self died with Christ on the cross. This is why they drown you completely not just a few drops on your head completely that's what they did in the bible that's the ancient way of baptism you're entering the realm of death this is why you go inside of the water completely and when you go up you resurrect with christ that's the symbol of water baptism it's a symbol that's good and needed i mean necessary to show to the spiritual world that we're now children of God. But water baptism without the baptism with the Holy Spirit does not save you because it's an own work, right? But again, born again and confessed communities, Christian communities tell to you, yeah, if you feel that you're born again, that you've received the Holy Spirit, then go water baptized as a symbol for the spiritual world. But they would always tell you, unless you're not born again yet, unless you've not received the Holy Spirit yet, it's not necessary to get water baptized because the water baptism alone cannot save you. So that's why I got water baptized after I was born again and received the Holy Spirit. So what's different now as a born again Christian? Well, My long-lasting depression is gone. My severe childhood trauma has been erased by Christ. I mean, I did three long-term psychotherapies before I got born again. And they could not help me, right? And uh, um, I took medicine against uh, my depression. But they couldn't help me. Now I know that my disconnection from the one and only true living God, Jesus Christ, was the cause for my void inside of me. And that only God himself, Jesus Christ, could fill the void. So most of us suffer from severe uh, diseases, let's say, let's say we have trauma or we have depression or we have suicidal thoughts and so on, we have negativity inside of us because we're disconnected from God. And of course, if you if you actually belong to God, you suffer from the disconnection of your original spiritual father. Once you've figured this out and decided for God, everything comes clear. That after this, you know, oh my goodness, My whole life I was only suffering because I was disconnected from Jesus Christ. So that's the tragedy. 
that God loved us so much that he gave his life for us so that we are saved and protected and that we could have salvation and could re-enter paradise. Yet, the vast majority of the people reject this wonderful gift, even though that's the biggest love that God could provide to us or prove to us. It's so sad to see. You know, I was running away from God almost my whole life long. Now I know that it was that it was just tragical, you know. I I I wish I would have come far earlier to Christ, but it didn't happen. So I'm I'm absolutely happy that it happened anyways. So you can come to Christ each day, each minute. And that's really crucial to know that you don't know when you will die. Aneurysma, thrombosis, heart attack, stroke, car accident, cancer, whatever. You don't know. So come to Christ today. What hinders you? Most of the time it's our pride or maybe fear we're not feeling worthy enough, but Jesus says you can come to me as you are. Come to me or you're hard-hardened or you're, or you're heavy. and You know what I mean. Um, all those who are heavy burdened and so on. Because God wants to, to heal and to help and to save us and to protect us.